the Irish guy, and just be warned, I am sick. No, I'm not admitting to watching The Human Centipede with my mum. No, I'm... I'm actually ill. Christ above, I am a sweating, shaking mess who honestly has a headache ripped from the depths of Mordor. I mean, just be warned, I may faint halfway through the video. So yeah, apologies if I vomit on the lens. But I mean, yeah. You all know why you're here. Oh, let's see what this moosely munching bin bag of a person got wrong this time. I mean, yes, in the past, my predictions have left a lot to be desired. And, um, that's been nice about it. I mean, you'll probably all tell me that every time I open my mouth to predict football, it's a bit like puking rancid horse meat all over your shoe, but... Hear me out, okay? I have a feeling that in this Champions League video, I might have actually got a few predictions right. But, I mean, is this my redemption? Let's see how many, if any, I got right. Right, let's go. Group A, fourth, Ajax. Ajax fans, don't be offended. They have no chance. I promise you that. I mean, if, if Ajax someone make it out of the group, then I will personally find any Dutch YouTuber of your choosing and mail them a chunk of my hair. Should I send my editor's details already or do you want to wait until it's official? Because I can tell you one thing, you will not get away with this prediction. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, you can see it in his eyes how giddy this young boy was to get his grubby mitts on the grook on the top of my skull. I mean, to do what with? I don't know, stick it in a sandwich, chew it in the shower, or maybe sellotape it to his thigh. I'm not sure, but Nuri, if that is your real name, you're not getting this. I mean, when Ajax began the group, a funding range is 4 nil. Oh, you all cackled like a bitter divorcee when she sees her desperate ex-husband having to take his cousin on a date. But no, yeah, you look absolutely fantastic in that match. But uh, then four defeats on the bounce, conceding 16 goals in four games. Admit it, since Eric Ten Hag has walked out on you, and so yeah, you're coping about as well as a pissed up Sean the Sheep. But still... I did get it wrong, I said fourth, and you finished third. So, it is a wrong prediction, yes, but I'm sorry. At least there aren't any excitable Dutch guys who get to eat my hair in the morning bottle of Weetabix. Third, Napoli. But I can't just ignore the Kalanou Kulabali has been ripped out of the heart of your defense. I'm sorry, it will be close, but I think third in the group. I didn't even break Napoli to get out of the group. What was I thinking? I said that losing Kalidou Koulibaly in the summer meant that we were about to witness this team crumbling like an out-of-date shepherd's pie. But not only did they not finish third, but they're top of Serie A, 10 points ahead of Juventus. And yeah, won this group at 15 points. If you told me the team playing with Diego Simeone's son up front, <coughs> <coughs> would be outscoring Liverpool in the group, then honestly, I would've thought there would be more chance of me agreeing to share a jacuzzi with my nan. So great, another one wrong. Really? Napoli third? Second Rangers. That Giovanni Le Bron, of course, is a brilliant coach. And an upgrade on Steven Gerrard. But this Rangers team is built for European night. Trust me, Rangers are getting out of the group. What was I thinking? Yeah. I actually thought a team from Scotland, a team who just failed to beat Livingston at home, would somehow finish above Napoli. Ah, oh, it's official then. My teachers were right. I mean, they tried to tell my mum at parent-teacher meetings that I was about as clever as a plastic pencil case. I mean, uh, I must be an idiot. I'm officially someone who was as intelligent as a slice of pie. Not only did Rangers not finish second, but lad, they were officially the worst Champions League team of all time. Zero points and a goal difference of minus 20. Lads, I'm furious. I feel like Rangers here have hung me out to dry. My lads, this is a competition which in the past have featured the likes of Nordschaland, Anorthosis Famagusta, Karabag, FC Cluj, even Astana from Kazakhstan. And yet none of them have put up a worse fight than Gio van Bramkors men. How embarrassing is this? You can't go from beating Europa League finalists to this. I mean, to be fair, the last time Rangers lost the Europa League final, they did wind up bottling their Champions League playoff two months later against a team from Lithuania. So maybe that was a more humiliating Europa League final hangover, but still, I think I overrated Gio. Uh, let's see what else I said. I mean, these European knights in Glasgow, I'm telling you, they will beat Napoli at home and they will nick a draw at Italy and yeah, grab a point from Liverpool at home too. A point at home to Liverpool. They conceded seven! I'm the likes of James Taverni. Yes, the former Newcastle missed it right back, who wasn't even deemed better than James Perch. Well, he's developed into one of the coolest penalty takers in the world. I promise you, if Taverni, this former Gateshead and Wigan flop, if he doesn't score his first ever Champions League goal this season, then I will do an entire video wearing my mum's dress. Yes! I was saved! Literally, three minutes left of the group, and they get an 87th minute penalty against Ajax. Oh, thank you, Jimmy T. And lads, what's more? Not only did he notch his first Champions League goal, but guess what? That means he has now scored 50% of Rangers goals in the group. Get in! No dress for me! First, Liverpool. Ah, yeah, pretty simple this. Uh, Liverpool don't win this group. I will go on a football daily video and beg them for forgiveness. Oh no, 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 no! Three goals, 
that's all it was. Three measly goals. I blame Darwin Nunes for this. He had about six clear-cut chances against Rangers at home. It says that night. Clearly, he'd also let his concentration stuff down the loo because he couldn't even score against a 40-year-old man who twice got relegated at home. Although, considering the backlash James Alcott got this week, this where the Nunes slander stops. But yeah, Liverpool, despite a horror show opening day calamity in Italy, they've actually had a brilliant Champions League group and 15 points and 17 goals scored usually wins you the group. But it's just a match they won. The likes of Joe Gomez and Trent Alexander-Arnold just had to play like two men who just had vasectomies in the car, just limping around the pitch all night. So yeah, great. That means that I officially got the entire group wrong. And right now, Oh, I'm dreading another date with Chris Hamill, which is probably a catchphrase often heard on London Tinder. Group B, fourth club Bruce. Sorry, bottom of the group on one sad and lonely point. I mean, what do you expect? Simon Mignolet is going to keep as many clean sheets as my incontinent cat. This is arguably one of my worst ever predictions of all time. Simon Mignolet is a former Sunderland goalkeeper. A guy who was once buying Loris Carius in a Liverpool pecking order. Someone who honestly had the reflexes of a milkshake that's just been drooled on by Jonah Hill. And yet, five clean sheets. For Club Bruges in the Champions League. As they stand, he's on his way to win the Champions League Golden Gloves. If that happens, he's going to be nominated for the Ballon d'Or. I'm cursed. Surely I am cursed. How are Club Bruges doing this? How can a team from Belgium go away and beat Porto 4-0 away from home and then lose 4-0 to Porto at home? How can they keep two clean sheets against Atletico Madrid? How are they doing this? This is surely the greatest Champions League group stage miracle of all time. They are third in the Belgian league. Eight points off the top. And yet here, just cruising into second in the group. Honestly, this it just makes no sense. I mean, what? What is going on? I am cursed! These are the footballing guards just choosing to poo down my chimney? Come on, please, please! When am I going to get one right? Third by Leverkusen. There are goals in that attack, but sorry, they're Europa League fodder this season. Maybe they might go far in that competition, maybe, but the Champions League, no chance. Yes! 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 I've got one! I've actually got one! Which just makes me sound like that creepy ice cream driver who keeps adopting kids. But lads, ladies and gentlemen, I have got one right. Bayer Leverkusen. Oh, Zabi Alonso. Right now, I could kiss you on the eyeball. You've just proven me right. Although, to be fair, this was a bit of a fluke. I mean, make no mistake about it. Leverkusen were like a pizza made from elephant sweat. Even the sight of them just made you feel violently ill. I mean, they finished joint bottom. All that separated them was the head-to-head -head record with Atletico Madrid. But lads, I was so very lucky because on match day five, Yannick Carrasco missed a 99th minute penalty against the Germans. It won't be close being second and third. No, they'll be out of contention with October. And yeah, we'll pick up six points. And that's it. I mean, I know they said six points and they got five, but I don't care. I said third. I'm taking this as a win. I'm sticking this one on the fridge. Beside the photo of my elderly aunt getting sick on the train. Second Porto. Ah, oh, Porto. They should have enough to get this done. And I'm expecting Brazilian forward Ivan Nielsen to explode in Europe this season. Get back seven goals in the group stages. Try and impress the Brazilian FA ahead of the World Cup. Ozzy, he's going to take this group by storm. Last season it was Darwin Nunes, but this time out, Ivan Nielsen is the next Champions League breakout star. What? He got one goal. Uh, about as forgettable as, well, I don't know, any school kid who sings a song by Elton John. Ozzy, I was dragged to my little cousin's Christmas play. After 20 minutes, I felt like biting off my own face. But listen, I said Porto, they should have finished second. They didn't deserve to top of the group. I mean, don't forget, they took zero points from the first two games. I guarantee you, after watching a team from Belgium score four on their turf, there won't have been a single Porto fan predicting that they go on to win the group. Obviously, if you had dared to utter that down a local Portuguese pub, I'm pretty sure the landlord would be ringing up the local loony bin. But yeah, they finished first, not second. So once again, I am wrong. First, I'll come Madrid. Easy work. Diego Simeone, you have no excuse. You have to win the group. Without a doubt, they're winning the group. Pathetic. This was absolutely pathetic. Diego Simeone, I am entirely blaming you. This is not my fault. It's yours. How are you doing this? How can you begin the group with a morale boosting, dramatic 101st minute win over Porto in one of the craziest finales of all time to then failing to win the next five? Not only that, you only scored three more goals and absolutely none against Club Bruges. It's pathetic. Three of your five group goals were scored in injury time. Simeone, this was an easy group. Odds, you've worked miracles in the past, yes, but I wouldn't blame some of Letty fans for calling for your heads. Don't get it wrong. How many sense for Europa League football when you've been put in such an easy group? That that would have been a disaster, but you didn't even manage that. Bottom, how? How could you have 100 million pound footballers, plural by the way, and still finish last? I'm actually impressed. It's a bit like losing an egg and spoon race to a guy with polio in his feet. I'm so glad I didn't put a forfeit on this because lads, I was so sure of this one that I might have predicted something wild like, oh, I don't know, that I'd film myself having a bath with my mum. Group C, fourth Victoria Pilsen. Bottom, Pilsen are gonna be crushed. Zero points, the end. Uh, um. 
This didn't take a genius. I mean, to be fair, Victoria Pilsen came dangerously close to wearing the crown of being the worst Champions League team of all time. But, uh, no, they didn't. So, uh, the manager should arguably right now send Van Bronckhorst half a dozen roses in the post. But, like, do you know what this means? I have got another one right. Get in! But again, uh, me, me celebrating this, uh, no. It's a bit like predicting that the next Star Wars film is going to suck. I mean... Obviously. Third into Milan. Romelu Lukaku might score one or two, but honestly, Inter are going to be so starved of possession in the group. And so yeah, he's mostly going to look about his loss as James Corden in the vegetable aisle. Ozzy, he's going to be an isolated tree stump. Well, um, Lukaku did only score once, but uh, he also only, only played once. I mean, since returning to Italy, I think his hamstrings have been about as sturdy as just mm, cheese melting on a windowsill. But no, to be fair, Inter Milan, they battled through the group. I said third, they finished second. Another one wrong! Second Barcelona. Listen, it will be close, but no. Second. It wasn't even close. Third. And they were done and dusted with a game to spare. Lads, Barcelona absolutely melted in the group stage again. And what's most unforgivable is that this exciting, fluid, Zabi ball. They, um, they failed to score in half their games in the group. I mean, this is the first time Robert Lewandowski has failed to get out of a Champions League group since 2012. And I'm pretty sure when he's playing Europa League football against someone like Sturm Graz in March, he's probably going to ask himself why he was so hell-bent on moving to the new camp. Honestly, I understand the lure of such a massive worldwide name, but no, they're not in a good moment right now. It's like Jennifer Lopez agreeing to marry Kanye West. Yeah, that's about as clever as stapling your eyelids to the fridge. First player minute. So, can Bayern do it in Europe without Robert Lewandowski? Yes, uh, of course, yes. Lads, this was easy, easy work. Six wins, only two goals conceded. But yeah, the third one I got right. Lads, I'm not doing too badly here, right? No, they got Sadio Mane playing through the middle, who, by the way, will finish as this group top scorer. No, that was still Lewandowski. Somehow. Group D, fourth, Eintracht Frankfurt. They're about to become the whipping boys of something that honestly just looks like a Europa League group. I'm sorry, but this is Europa League level. You're finishing bottom. I was right. This is Europa League group. And lads, I track Frankfurt could have finished bottom. I mean, lads, this wasn't some revolting pick six suggestion. This was the most open group in the entire competition. But now they didn't finish bottom. They finished second. And lads, we're also six seconds away from winning the group. But great. Another one wrong. Third sporting list. Yes! Yes! Everybody dance! Christ, they sound like a middle-aged DJ down the pub. Sporting will do okay. They'll push for second all the way, but no. Third and into the Europa. This might be the most accurate soundbite in the entire video. They did do okay. They beat Tottenham at home. They did push for second all the way. Well, lads, uh, do you realize how close they were to finishing bottom? If Pierre Neil Hoiberg hadn't scored the winner, Bas Marseille on a counter attack that had actually gone 40 seconds over the four minutes of added time, then Sporting would have finished bottom of the group, and I would have been wrong. Again! So thank you, Pierre. Thank you for giving me a correct fourth. Second Marseille. I have a good feeling that Marseille will claw their way into the knockouts. Am I insane? Have I poured washing powder into my cornflakes? No. Four wins from five games in the league. Marseille. Marseille look good. And I'm gonna go one further. They're going to beat Tottenham at the Stade Velodrome in a coaching battle between two Juventus legends. Just you watch. I'm devastated. This was almost the perfect prediction. This soundbite, it could have gone viral. Played on every news station in the country. I'd have had actual fortune tellers ringing me up and asking me for my secrets. You know, the, the type of fake mystics who pretend to be chatting to your dead relatives when in reality, they're just chatting to a shattered coffee mug. But I was so close. If Shad Kalashinats knew how to use his head, and yes, that is how you say his name, Come on guys, don't you know Bosnian? He is a professional footballer. You've been presented a chance as a former Arsenal player to knock Tottenham out of the Champions League. Surely, this is what you've been praying for ever since the group was made. All you have to do is direct this simple header on target and the pace of the ball would have it nestling in the back of the net and then Marseille finish second and I look like an absolute genius. But I still feel like this is a good prediction. They were good and did not deserve to finish bottom. And the fact that the 95th minute counter-attack even robbed them of the consolation of Europa League football whilst they were pushing for a winner that would have taken them seconds. I mean, they gambled everything and came up with nothing. I'm gonna say it. This is the most cruel Champions League group stage for any team of all time. First Tottenham. I know, I know the Tottenham project is going to blow up in Antonio Conte's face. I refuse to believe he's going to succeed where Jose Mourinho, yes, a better manager, failed. There is something systemically wrong with Tottenham when it comes to winning things. But, lucky for you, this is an easy group. Uh at least I got one right. Just that. Hoiberg's winning goal. That alone just earned me two correct predictions. Ozzy Pierre, if I ever run into you in the streets, I don't care that you don't know me. I'm giving you a hug. Please don't punch me in the eye. Group E, fourth the Nemesis Grand. Bottom, yawn, next. Yeah. When did Nemesis Grand beat Chelsea? You all excitedly pooed on the floor. Oh, Irish guy is the brains of potato pie. 
Now, lads, they still finished bottom. What else you got? Third, Rebel Southworth. This is such an easy group. This is not a Champions League level team. I'm sorry, but they're not. Oh yeah, they'll eat them as a grip for lunch. And grind out six points, but no. Third. Yes, yes, yes! Get in! That's arguably the most perfect prediction in the list. So accurate. Lads, that's my sixth one, right? Second, AC Milan. Yes, he'll get second. And yes, it'll be your first Champions League knockout round in nine years. Oh, come on. It's almost if you UEFA gift wrapped you an easy path to the second round. Just done it! Another correct prediction! What is going on? First, Chelsea. Chelsea are out of form, yes. I'm sorry, they are walking this group. I have just predicted the entire Group E with 100% perfection. That for this one group alone, maybe I, I did have a brief portal into the future. Maybe the Psychic Overlords did tap into me for this one. Maybe for this brief moment for just this group. Then yes, I've shown that actually, at times, I can be like a Psychic Werewolf. Get in! Group F, fourth chapter of the net. They don't have the quality anymore. They don't even have an impressive coach anymore. Sorry, lads. Bottom. No. I got this one wrong. To be fair, lads, Shakhtar only lost two matches. They didn't do too badly at all. And third, Europa League football, they did okay. Third, RB Leipzig. Uh, this is controversial. Seven points and third. Ah, that was a horrendous call. What was I thinking? Second Celtic. Uh, am I insane? Yes. Yes, you are. I'm tipping both Scottish clubs to qualify. I'm sorry. What? Exactly. What? Oh, right, here's the bad news. You will be embarrassed in this group. Real Madrid will beat you 7-0 in Spain. I mean, it wasn't 7-0, but it wasn't far off. And so, just watch. Next week, you are going to beat Real Madrid. It'll be one of the most famous nights in the history of your club. No, they lost 3-0. Ozzy, trust me. Yeah, you'll end the group with a goal difference of minus 4, but... 9 points on the board. Yes. Nine. No, instead, rock bottom and two sad and lonely points. I can't even explain it. I can't justify this. I actually thought that a team with a ball cream egg like Aaron Moy from China in midfield would actually wind up in the Champions League last 16. What is this? First, Real Madrid. Yeah, and the Real Madrid are about to lose to a Scottish opponent. Ah, uh, no, no, they're not. Top of the group with 15 points. But yeah, at least I got this one right. But, but I mean, come on. It, it was obvious, wasn't it? Group D, fourth Copenhagen. Oh, yes, how intimidating. Traveling to Denmark, they got a Copenhagen team whose manager is called Jess. This is light work for everyone in the group. Zero points. I mean, lad, for every point Copenhagen take in this group, I will pour a glass of milk over my face. <sighs> Thanks, Copenhagen. Third, Russia Dorman. This will come down to the width of a point. Oh, yeah. Third, on eight points. No, they finished second. Another one wrong. Second, Sevilla. Sevilla are in crisis, right? But listen, they are in poor form, yes. And considering they lost 6-0 to Arsenal pre-season, I think it's going to be the exact same result that the Eddie had. A 6-0 Man City win. But yeah, they'll draw with Dortmund twice, but crucially, I reckon they will nick a point off City at home with a spirited 1-1 draw. Yeah, 9 points and through, but... Boy, will it be close. Lads, I already said it in the video. Sevilla were in crisis. Lads, yeah, they're in the La Liga relegation zone. They are an absolute mess. It's a car crash. An utter disaster. I knew all this. Why didn't I just continue to back my intuition and just say third? They've been awful in this group. And lads, I've got to say this. The fact that this horrible mess of a team have managed to capitulate and yet still get rewarded with Europa League football while a spirited Marseille played well in every match and are rewarded with nothing. How is that fair? First Man City. Easy. Easy work. Erling Allen will score against every team, and Utley Wolf is old Dortmund teammates for breakfast. And 16 points for City. Next. I mean, yeah, pretty much. Group H, fourth, Maccabee Haifa. They have no chance. Bottom of the group, zero points. Next. I mean, lads, if Maccabee Haifa don't finish bottom, I will eat a cheeseburger out of a cat litter box. That you don't understand how nervous I was watching this group play out. The only reason they weren't kept on bottom spot was due to their goal difference. As Juventus finished joint bottom with a team from Israel. Surely that's about as embarrassing. At that time, you can see the four at Fulham. Honestly, lads, on match day six, Maccabee Haifa were drawing 1 1 with Benfica. And um, for that moment, Juventus were in fourth. And I was Googling whether or not eating food out of a litter box would infect your tongue. That's I got so very lucky here. Third Benfica. This is too tough for Benfica. Sorry Benfica, but third, no chance of going through. None. No chance. None. <sighs> uh, they instead chose to stare down both Juventus and PSG to uh, finish top of the group. But I'm sorry. Who saw that coming? What a performance, Benfica! Oh, uh, do you reckon Darwin Nunes is just a little bit jealous? Second, Juventus. Juventus are still a ghost of the force they used to be. But I'm expecting Dusan Vlahovic to catch fire in the group stage. And yeah, they'll squeak in a second. I blame Juventus for this one. How? How is Max Allegri still in a job? Since returning, he's essentially taken his proud Juve legacy. And just instead, 
It now looks like the Italian Krusty the Clown. It's embarrassing. He once took this club to two Champions League finals. And now, just taking three lonely points from this group, losing to Maccabi Haifa. Sorry, I refuse to take the blame for this prediction. This is entirely Juve's fault. Finishing 11 points behind second. This is a disgrace! First PSG, if PSG don't win this group with the players they have, then they'll probably start wondering why they went out and appointed a manager who used to be Portland assistant coach. But no, they will. They will eat this group for toast. And Kylian Mbappe is going to run riot. Lads, this was unlucky. Fiercely unlucky. Yes, officially I was wrong because PSG came second, but come on. They were level up points with Benfica and leveled for a goal difference, goals scored and goals conceded. It was an identical group stage. The only reason PSG had to settle for second is because Benfica scored more away goals, but lads, if that would be level two, then PSG would have topped this group based on their UEFA coefficient ranking. And then I'm pretty sure you know the Benfica president getting sick of his shoe and screaming at how football had just become the Super League without us realising. Honestly, lads, imagine, imagine if the UEFA coefficient Efficient, uh, was used to separate the two teams. There would have been uproar in the media. But yeah, great. Another one wrong. Okay, lads, honestly. I don't know how I managed to get through that video because I feel like sweating up a lung. I'm very, very dizzy. But let's see, how many did I get right? 13 out of 32. That works out at 40%. I passed. I actually passed. I mean, in the Irish exams, that is the equivalent of a D. Yes! I'm framing this one in the fridge. Look at me now! Who's got the prediction skill of a plastic teapot now, eh? Ah, oh, lads. I need to go to bed. Anyways, we're all gonna enjoy the video. Don't forget to subscribe as always. I'll talk to you in a while. <coughs> uh.